How to prepare for a recession. Frugal living. From where we're sitting, a recession is beginning to look almost inevitable. It's just a matter of when. So in today's video, we're going to go over some frugal tips that you can start using today to help prepare. Now you've been hearing the term recession a lot lately, so before we continue, let's go over what a recession is so we are on the same page. In simple terms, a recession is a slowdown or a significant decline in economic activities that lasts for several months and in some cases years. So why should you care? Isn't this something for our governments or investment advisors to worry about? Unfortunately, economic recessions impact just about everyone in society. Yes, that includes people like you. In a recession, investments lose value, businesses fail, and unemployment rises. Overall, people tend to experience a lower standard of living due to tightening credit, employment uncertainty, investment losses, and reduced consumer confidence. So, why do I think a recession is on its way even though recent reports have been indicating that things aren't as bad as people are making them out to be? The first indicator is the rising inflation we've been experiencing over the last few months. Lately, you've probably noticed that every time you go to the grocery store, that box of cereal is getting a bit more expensive, and you could thank the first indicator of an upcoming recession for that. Now, fortunately, in the US and Canada, we've seen inflation taking a bit of a dip after recent interest rate hikes. However, people are still being punished by the rising cost, prompting them to spend less and ultimately slow down the economy. Second, we have rising wages. Whether it's people not wanting to go back to their old offices or not wanting to work at all nowadays, the job market have, has been having immense trouble in filling vacancies across the country. As a result, employers are being forced to pay top dollar to fill their positions or hire on expensive contractors to get their work done. However, continuing to pay larger wages ultimately drags down a company's bottom line, slowing growth and potentially leading the job cuts in the future. So, how badly are companies being affected by the current job market conditions? According to one survey, the average salary increase in 2022 was 4.8%, which is the highest increase we've seen in decades. It's important for people to get paid what they're worth but from a recession perspective, this behavior is concerning. Finally, there's housing. The housing market is one of the major drivers of the US economy. If you add up all the money Americans spend on building houses, buying houses, renovating and renting houses, it adds up to 15 to 18% of gross domestic product. That's why two of the clearest indicators of a pending recession are sharp drops in both new housing construction and home sales. Economists pay close attention to the number of housing starts or new housing construction programs breaking ground each month. An increase in housing starts means that builders are confident that the economy will continue to perform well over the next six months and that consumers will have available cash to buy new homes. Other housing indicators act as a barometer for consumer confidence, like the monthly reports of pending home sales and existing home sales. When consumers feel good about their future job security and earning potential, they're more likely to make a big financial plunge, like buying a new home. When they worry about layoffs and stock market declines, housing sales numbers go down. Looking back at the housing data since 1960, Housing st starts have decreased 25% on average before each recession. As of a couple months ago, housing starts were down and new mortgage applications decreased significantly as mortgage rates got higher, which we can assume had to do with the Fed raising its benchmark interest rate. So what can you do to prepare for what appears to be an inevitable recession? Here are some tips to help you ride out tough economic times. The first thing you should do is have an emergency fund fully funded before the economy takes a dip or goes off a cliff, whichever the result ends up being. Now, being fully funded for some people may look significantly different for others. Typical advice is to save around three to six months of basic living expenses. And if you are in a position where you, you experience job loss, having this money set aside will be a lifesaver. 
However, there is a slight wrinkle in this advice that needs to be clarified so that you are as well prepared for an upcoming recession as possible. Under normal conditions, it takes an average person five to six months to get a new job. However, in a recessionary market, companies tend to be trying to save money rather than spending it to hire new staff, which means that it could take, in fact, take you longer to get employed. It's for this reason that to be extra safe, it's important to have 12 months of living expenses set aside. This may seem like a bit excessive and you could be using that money elsewhere. However, the peace of mind knowing that you could go a year without working is well worth whatever extra gains you're giving up. And if you're working on building your own emergency fund right now, let me know by gently tapping that like button below. The second thing you could do to prepare for an upcoming recession is to be mostly debt free. If you have debt as a recession is approaching, I would definitely be looking to pay down this debt now, especially things like credit cards and high interest loans. Now this does come with a slight caveat though, because there's a very good reason why this point came after building an emergency fund. Of course, paying off your credit cards and any other high interest loans is advisable, but if in doing so you leave yourself with absolutely no buffer in terms of savings, you could end up in a more precarious position if you happen to lose your job, which we just talked about being a possibility during a recession. So ideally, if you can set yourself up first with an emergency fund, then start paying debt so that you aren't totally adding to your debt if your income is affected. Staying in the same lane, the third thing to be mindful of is that a potential recession approaches is taking on additional debt. Now ideally, you're someone who always pays off their credit card on time and in full and intend to keep it that way as the economy takes a dip, because as you know, debt can really spiral out of control as your income ceases while your bills continue to roll in. In fact, because of how punishing this debt can be on your financial well-being during a recession, it actually makes sense to charge less expenses to credit during this time. This is because if you do find your income being compromised, you may not have the funds to cover your purchases, whereas if you pay with cash, your debts are already settled. Only spending cash and giving up the benefits you receive from your credit card is probably a little too cautious of a move for most people, but acknowledging that your debt risk could go up during tough economic times still puts you ahead of most people mindlessly swiping their cards everywhere they go. Moving on to number four, we have everyone's favorite financial activity, which is budgeting. As a recession draws closer, you need to budget and reassess your lifestyle. I know, when, I know no one really wants to hear this, especially after two years of limited socializing and spending loads of time at home. Many of us are ready to make up for lost time and really enjoy ourselves. But now would be a really good time to start living within your means and by following a budget and cutting down on non-essential spending. In fact, by doing this, you could free up money to set aside in your emergency fund or use to pay down your debts so that money you're not spending will help bolster yourself in case a hard recession does come our way. Now, what's unfortunate is not everyone watching this video right now actually uses a budget. Budgets are a nuisance and they're about as fun as watching paint dry. Fortunately, with the right budget, conducting this important financial activity is much more bearable. This is where the split budget comes into play, and it's a budget that takes five minutes and to make and to update every month. So how does this budget work? The split budget involves dividing your total income into two groups, your spending and your saving. Let me share an example to explain further. So let's say you earn $5,000 a month after taxes and over the last six months, you've averaged expenses of $3,000. In this case, you would set your split budget to be 60% spending and 40% saving. There are no complicated cost categories, no formulas to remember, nothing. Just determine how much you could spend, and as long as you track your spending to that amount, you'll easily save money that will help protect you for whenever a recession takes place. Now that you've got a budget you could use, the next step is to pad that top line by making more money. 
Now this is something that can be really hard to do, and it's for this reason that we've left it until later in the video. The reality is that most people have no idea how to make more money, but the options are more plentiful than they realize. For starters, you could take on an additional job or work overtime at your current one. Now this is easier said than done during a depressed market because as mentioned before, when the economy is in a slide, companies are looking to cut costs, not increase them. It's for this reason that it's advisable that people learn a skill that they could use to make money online. And if they want to learn, you could do this yourself and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. This is an ideal approach to making more money in a recession for two main reasons. First, it increases your reach. For instance, if the job market in your city is struggling, that doesn't mean that you can't find clients in other parts of the world where they are more financially stable. Second, making money online typically allows you to work when you want, making it more conducive to being a means of making more money in a combination with the job you already presently have. To do this, simply look on freelance websites for your job postings that people would need filled and then learn those skills through online courses or YouTube, and once you're proficient, start applying for them. Typically, it only takes one or two contracts to make a few thousand dollars a month of side income, and that's all most people need to stay ahead when the financial world is crumbling around them. Speaking of financial disaster, the key when times get tough is that you don't panic. While all these increased costs with potential further rises can seem really scary right now, often these things don't tend to be as bad as they initially seem. Yes, some belt tightening might be needed, but when we may, may not see unemployment rates go off the charts and the recession could be milder or shorter than we anticipate. People that have lived through previous downturns will tell you that yes, it can be tough at times, but you usually make it out okay in the end. Many of us went through the 2008 recession and we're still here to tell the tale, so I think we should all give ourselves some credit for that. Also, it's very possible that the signs mentioned earlier in the video won't result in a recession, but employing these tips shared, you will undoubtedly improve your financial situation regardless of what the future holds, especially if you use the nine tips I share in this video. So click on over and let's get started.